As a young man, Ken came to the National Archives intent on making discoveries in our records that would bring the Civil War to life for the first generation of Americans to have no living memory of the participants. Ken's work here and at archives, libraries, and battlefields across the nation led to the most watched series in PBS history and well-deserved Emmy recognition. This September will mark 20 years since tens of millions of Americans sat transfixed in front of their televisions, watching a documentary about a subject they thought they had forever left behind in classrooms years before. He has set the bar high for us in documenting the Civil War. Please join me in welcoming a man who knows the true value of our records, ladies and gentlemen, Ken Bird. Good morning. Early in my professional life, I ended, realized I was going to spend a good deal of my life with archivists and librarians. And at one particular moment, I fell under the spell of a particularly charismatic uh, archivist and librarian who took me down the miles and miles of stacks that archives around the country have. And at one point, he stopped and gestured expansively, surveying, in this case, a library from its guts, and said, uh, this is the DNA of our civil Civilization. And I think that that's really true. I, I come to you this morning wearing three hats. Uh, first is, of course, and most important as a citizen of the United States, who knows that our essential freedoms are dependent on the free and open access to information. And there is more information in this building than just about anywhere else on this planet. Information about the quotidian details of our remarkable public and the struggle to stay remarkable. And I think that as a private citizen, I take my hat off to the work of the people day in and day out who oversee this remarkable uh, institution and who continue to put out remarkable uh, exhibitions like the current Discovering the Civil War. The second I come as a filmmaker uh, who has engaged in telling the story of American history for more than 30 years. And in every instance, in every film, I have had to rely on this magnificent institution. We literally don't get up and start a film without visiting the National Archives and finding out what treasures are here. Inevitably, our original view of what the subject matter of our film changes as we discover, working closely with the archi archivists here, uh, new aspects of a subject that we didn't know anything about. And finally, and proudly as well, I come as a vice president of the Foundation for the National Archives, which is this public private group supporting the work of this extraordinary place. Um, you know, most of the way we tell our history is from the top down. We see American history in our own eyes as a kind of succession of presidential administrations punctured by wars. And we do this at our peril. It neglects so many ordinary, bottom-up uh, circumstances, which is why this extraordinary institution uh, is part of the DNA of our civilization, because it stores and encodes the best of us. And what I think will mutate into betterness for our civilization and our posterity. They quite literally save everything. And we don't know, as historians, amateur historians, documentary filmmakers, what will be of importance as we go down the line. Uh, this bottom-up approach to history is extraordinarily valuable because it engages our citizens in the practical work of democracy. It is possible to come here and see how this engine works. And that is what I've taken advantage of as a private citizen, as a filmmaker, and now certainly as a member of the Foundation for the National Archives. And specifically, this new exhibit, uh, Discovering the Civil War, is of immense importance. The Civil War is, of course, the most important event in American history. It is the traumatic event in the childhood of our nation. And what the National Archives permits us to do in all its myriad records is see the history of the United States not as just some distant subject matter in a history book, dry dates and facts and events of little meaning and concern, but a living, breathing history that touches on individuals. And this kind of systemic uh, understanding of the power of ordinary lives to move up and transform our history is at the heart of the mission here, that we are made stronger and better as a republic by the virtue of the information that we store and catalog here, but also by its free access to every 
everyone curious about the mechanics of this extraordinary republic. And that's what I've been able to avail myself as a private citizen and as a, as a filmmaker. When I uh, was nearing the close of the production of the Civil War series uh, back uh, in 1989, before it's broadcast in 1990, I had spent many, many weeks in this building uh, going over not only the remarkable photographic legacy of the Civil War that the National Archives houses here, but also many other documents that prove from, as the archivist said, the Freedmen's Bureau or some of the fragmentary records of the War of the Rebellion as the uh, Civil War is officially entitled by the United States government, or of course the myriad records of uh, the Union's struggle to preserve the, the, this country. Um, we were touched daily by the powerful sense that Shelby Foote expressed to us in an interview. He said that when speaking about our country before the Civil War, we said the United States are. We saw ourselves as a plural thing, a collection of states, that after the Civil War, for all the issues issues that it engaged and perhaps did not ultimately settle, we began to refer to ourselves in the singular. We began to say the United States is, and that's actually ungrammatical. And I think what we celebrate with the opening of this new remarkable exhibition, what we celebrate with every gesture uh, of this uh, National Archives, is the notion that we are made into a one thing by collecting the history of where we've been. The United States are has become the United States is. We have become a kind of singular force because of the myriad of documents that we celebrate here. And towards the end of the production, I had uh, an opportunity to work very closely over many years uh, with folks in the military history uh, division of the National Archives. And one day, as we were about to finish uh, editing, too late to put into our film, I was sent a series of uh, facsimiles of documents in the National Archives from one of the archivists. And it detailed the actions of a certain Union General Averill in the newly created state of West Virginia at Moorefield in 1863, the summer of 1863. And it turns out General Averill was able to capture uh, in the fascinating records that I was presented here, a number of Confederates who were from Captain McClanahan's company of Virginia horse artillery. And I, I just went through the records. It was so detailed. They were all uh, captured, some were wounded, one was killed, and the rest were shipped off to uh, Camp Chase in Ohio to spend the rest of the war uh, from on the sidelines. And I, I, I paged through all the documents that were there and discovered the list of all of the prisoners. Uh, one was five feet five inches tall with gray eyes uh, who said he was a blacksmith and had not had any interest in the raging constitutional uh, issues of the day. He'd been forced to serve uh, in the Confederate Army and Captain McClanahan's company of Virginia Artillery. It detailed the term of his imprisonment at Camp Chase and how he is released at City Point in April of 1865, City Point, Virginia. Uh, and then all records of him disappear. Uh, but most notable to me was his name, which was Abraham Burns, my great-great-grandfather. And I felt, as I think so many of the people who have used the National Archives to discover a connection to their real American history, their personal bottom-up American history, a profound sense of intimacy at the huge magnificence of this place, and that this has been translated into this exhibit and will have now, with the power of its touring around the country, the power to transform in the way I was, the sense that, that History is not was, but is, as William Faulkner said. And that's the essence of what goes on here every day. It is the essence of the strength of this uh, remarkable exhibition. And I look forward to you having a chance to dive into it and to see what I've seen uh, about the glories of what's been collected here.